Now that's where we conclude your sports here on Morning Live. To have a blessed Wednesday ahead, 36 minutes now past eight. Time for Ayanda to take you through the rest of Morning Live. Thank you so much, Valen. Well, the Minister of Health, Dr. Aaron Mutswagliedi, called on corporate South Africa to help primary school learners in lower income areas with eye care, especially since the cost of eye care is often so exorbitant that it can prohibit youngsters from getting quality education. Alteba Yabupilo, health care administrator, has taken the minister up on that challenge and wants to help detect problems early on. They have a campaign that is now in its second phase and making quite an impact. And here to tell us more about it is Rowan Laird. He is the CEO of Tebe Yabupilo. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Ayanda. Talk to us about this initiative. What is it all about? All right. Well, Ayanda, we're a healthcare company. Our, our target market is, is mainly entry-level members. Um, and we provide affordable for them. We, um, we have decided to focus on the communities that our members come from, which are often the most disadvantaged communities in the country, and specifically the schools. Um, that are in those communities. Um, we, we decided to actually look and focus on, on eye care simply because a lot of learners might actually be performing poorly due to reasons of poor sight, etc. So we have partnered um, in the first instance with the Department of Basic Education in Mpumalanga as well as our, our mother company, Tebe, and the Tebe Foundation to provide a program of eye tests um, throughout um, schools in Mpumalanga, and we've now moved into the northwest region as well. Um, we partner with a company called PPN, Preferred Provider Network, which actually runs a, a network of, optometry, of optometrists rather, throughout the country. So basically what happens is that we will go into the schools, we will do a basic uh, assessment in the schools. So last year, for instance, we tested about 2,500 kids, um, of those, we identified 400 for further tests, and they went for a full full eye tests and and um, at at an, at an optometrist. And of those, about 150 received glasses. Now, this program runs in conjunction with a literacy and numeracy program, as I said, driven by the Department of Basic Education. And the the idea is is that on an annual basis, we then review the performance of the kids so that we can monitor progress. Um, and we want to roll this out into, into more schools, as, as many schools as possible. Mm. And have you found that uh, the youngsters who, who managed to get this intervention performed better now that they can see? Yeah. Well, we, we actually started the program at the beginning of 2013. The end year results were very encouraging. 70% um, of the schools showed an, a, a marked improvement in the in the ANA test. Um, this year will really be the proof of the pudding because now the kids will have had their glasses for a year and we will then hopefully see, see a marked improvement. But we've got no doubt that it will make a major impact. Mm. Talk to us about the second phase now and what that entails. Okay, so we now, um, what will happen now, we've rolled it out now into the northwest region as well. Um, and we basically start with kids at, at grade one level. Um, thereafter, we test the kids on a, on a two-yearly basis. So, you know, the eye, the eye tests, their eyes might have deteriorated or whatever, and we then replace and, and um, issue new glasses, etc. And obviously, through this whole process, we monitor progress. So, we intend to roll this out over the full 12 years of the, of the children's education so that we can get a real sense um, of the impact that, that poor eyesight is actually having on education. Mm -hmm. what, what sort of feedback have you received from the learners and their parents? Uh, we've had great, we've really had great feedback. Um, you know, as I said earlier, most of these kids are coming from very disadvantaged communities. Um, whether or not the parents know um, or have identified eyesight as a problem is, is only part of the problem. The other thing is affordability, being able to afford to get a, a pair of glasses for your child. So they are, they've been extremely grateful and very supportive in the process. We've had to um, also, uh, just by way of it, is often for kids glasses um, might be a little bit of a stigma. So we've also, as part of this program, we've, we've undertaken a communication campaign around wearing glasses is cool, etc., and encouraging the kids to see it as, as, as something that's cool and, and something that's going to help them to perform in life. I like that. I, I think it's very good that you considered that because yeah. many times, you yeah. know, young people can be very, very cruel. They yeah. say it as they see it. So to, to change the perceptions on glasses yeah. is very important if you're going to intervene yeah. in this manner. Exactly right. Yeah. Let's talk now about the costs. 
the business of any business is to yeah. make money. Yeah. You're spending this money. Yeah. How is that meeting your objectives? Well, you know, I, I, I think, look, first of all, I think we, we've been lucky to be able to partner with a number of organizations to achieve this. We couldn't have done this on our own. Um, but I think one needs to recognize as a business person that your success is, is ultimately determined by the success of the communities that support you. So if those communities are not, are not thriving and are not growing, our own market will not grow. And then we tend to look at it in that light. Hmm. Are there any challenges, any hiccups along the way that you've identified? Um, there have been. I think organization has been a challenge um, initially. I think we've now got the hang of how to get everyone into the right place at the right time. We've had challenges with, with, with um, power at some of the schools where we've had to move the kids to another venue. But other than that, I think we've, we've really been very, very blessed in terms of the support that we've received from everyone. And it continues in the same schools or different? educational facilities this no. coming year? Well, we, we continue in the same schools um, through the program, but we're also extending to take on more schools. So, um, as I said earlier, we've moved now into the northwest, and we, we're doing five schools in that in that region at the moment, and we'll roll it out as this as this process grows. Job well done. Thank you so very much Thank for you. joining us there. Uh, CEO of Tebe Pelo, Mr. Rohan Laird. <laughs> Technology is all around us and is improving lives across Africa. Like how